Hello everybody, this is GM Jesse Cry, and it's my pleasure to bring you a game that got all of us excited, the recent Capel Le Grand tournament in France. This game was shown in the Skittles Room numerous times to great enjoyment and humor to all those who saw it. Uh, it's a game between uh, two 2400 players, uh, Popchev being black, who's a GM, against Nestorovich, and this was played at the end of 2008. So let's take a look at the game. Um, we got e4, g6, d4, bishop g7, knight c3. Now, obviously knight f3 is also very playable and it wouldn't allow the system that black now plays, but the idea of the knight c3 move order is that maybe the knight on g1 might wish to go to e2 or just sit for a while, in particular if white wants to play something very aggressive like bishop e3, queen d2, and castles long. And um, Popchev plays a very interesting move here, knight c6, directly attacking the d4 pawn. Um, and we're going to see this game has some very interesting tactical ideas, but before we even get to the tactics, we're going to see this nice hypermodern play by black. So the idea here is that if d5, knight d4, and if you try to kick my knight out, I'm going to stay. And um, if you say play knight e2, I'm going to do the same trick again with c5 with a playable game for black. So um, white decides to play bishop e3 first. And here Pope Jeff plays a very interesting idea. He plays d5. Now first let's think about what the idea of this move is. Um, if white plays the natural looking e5, it's important to see that this is really what black wants. Um, our listeners might be familiar with the Gurganitsa system, where black plays g6, bishop g7, and c6, d5. c6, d5, not like, like here, knight c6, d5. And so really what black has here is a much improved version of that Gurganitsa. In the Gurganitsa, black all, also wants white to push e5, getting this French-like structure with the bishop free on c8, not blocked by the pawn on e6. And right away, black could continue to attack the center with f6. And for example, if f4, knight h6. And black has a very nice game, all of his pieces being able to find good squares. So that's really the idea behind this very hypermodern looking d5. Of course, we have to have some tactical justifications for this move as well. If knight takes d5, then we're going to push the knight away and play knight takes d4. This position, I think, is actually quite playable for white, and maybe this is in fact what white should have done here. Something like queen d2 and castles long look strong for white. Um, also, Black had to have some ideas on e takes, and they, that seems to be knight b4. And if, say, check to interrupt the attack on the d5 pawn, bishop d7, bishop c4, and now bishop f5. And black gets play against c2, and next he's going to play knight f6, trying to regain his pawn on d5. So the playable game, but also perhaps a little bit better for white. So I think those are the two main options for white if he wants to choose to play for an advantage here, e takes or knight takes. In the game, white played very naturally with knight f3. And really, to my mind, what this admits is really that black has been able to make two pawn moves, g6 and d5, and all of his pieces have found good squares. He's got like a Grunfeld set up. All of his pieces finding reasonable squares. Because now we can take. And now Popchev makes um, a debatable decision, but one very much in keeping with the hypermodern style of his opening play. I think more practical would have been just to play knight f6, and after an exchange, black's play is totally adequate in this position. Because bishop h6 can't work because the pawn in d4 hangs, and so we'll just castle next and have good play. So, as it was, though, if Popchev hadn't played the way he did, he, we wouldn't have found this brilliant game. And that is knight h6. So knight h6 intends to play knight f5, again attacking this pawn with hyper, in hypermodern style. 
So the problem is, is that if White doesn't do anything dramatic now, he's gonna, he's really gonna let Black's pieces really fall where they, where they're gonna be best. So White decides to take things by the horns and play his D5. And this looks like it's really using his central control to make my knight on c6 bad. And uh, we're about to have that question put to our knight here. Knight b4, queen d2, and it looks like black's really blown it. The b4 knight is hanging, and the h6 knight is hanging. But black comes up with a very interesting tactical idea to stay in the game, and that is a5. So the first point to see is that if bishop takes h6, we're going to end up with knight takes c2 at the end. And I have a feeling this is in fact what white should have done. Because in this position, um, the a1 knight is going to fall. And even though white's king looks exposed, really white's minors are so strong in this position that after we win the knight, on a1, black's king is going to come under just as much attack as white's. So I think that would have been the proper punishment for uh, black, but even then we can see that that's going to be a long game just because the kings are running. As it was, um, white was probably feeling very much provoked here. And one of the interesting things about hypermodern play is that we really are testing the limits of traditional chess by moving our pieces in these funny ways and that encourages, provokes our opponent to try to punish us and often in that act of punishing is where he loses the reins more than any other kind of position. And the idea that white has here is a3. So obviously if the knight just moves away the h6 knight will fall. But black's knight, our question is, queen takes d5. So we win a pawn and threaten e4. And after pawn takes knight, we play queen takes knight, and we're at least temporarily stopping the bishop from hitting our knight. Well, the fun isn't over yet. White's idea is this. First we kick the queen. And if we don't do anything grand, the knight's simply going to come into the center with f5 or g4, and black's going to be beautiful. Notice, too, how strong this bishop is talking to that b2 pawn. So white has to do something um, extraordinary, and here plays castles.